Having a look at the final render, we get a soft plume of dust coming off the back of the character's feet where they interact with the ground. We could reduce the global density if we wanted to have a more subtle effect, but for the purposes of this lecture and integrating it into a, just a simple black background, having a higher density just is a little more, more visual. At this point, with our effect more or less completed, I'm going to close down the flipbook and we'll look at packaging both the render tree for our dust material as well as the ice tree into something that we could use later on in any other project. So we'll start off with the render tree. I'll actually just delete the Fong preset as I don't need it. And I'll take the particle render, the particle shaper, and the attribute color, select all three, right click, and create a compound out of them. If I double click on the shader compound, or actually jump in to edit it, I'll rename the shader compound. I'll call it my dust my dust shader. And I'll expose a few attributes that uh, would be important to me to, to tune, or as an artist that would uh, allow them to tune the effect a little better. So under the shaper, I'll definitely need access to the intensity and texture attributes for the cell, irregular shape, and fractal shape. As far as the attribute color goes, we definitely need to access the, the type of attribute that we're going to use, so we'll use the default attribute. Okay, And we'll actually expose the attribute as well. So we're actually able to change the default color if we want to, as well as the drop down that allows us to choose the init color, color, or uh, other values. If I have a look in the volume rendering, the cell size is going to be important for me to expose. And since the density shape is already being driven by the particle shaper, that looks pretty good. Under the volume color, I could also tint the volumetric effect by working the ambience and diffuse intensity uh, scalar values, as well as the tint ambient color. So we'll map in. And we're not really working the global gradient color or density values, so we can leave those alone as well. I'll close down the compound editor, and I'll export the shader compound. So we'll export compound. We've got a few render tree compounds already built. So I'll export. And that should be it. If I have a look down at the bottom under shader compounds, we now have access to our dust shader. So I can use this in any scene. I'll close down the material manager and I'll do the same for the ice tree that we've built as well. So I'll go full screen on the ice tree and I'll get rid of the show hide preset manager and at this point I'm going to want to make sure that anything that's not inside of the compound uh, isn't related to a specific scene element for example the wind is related to a scene element so I'll make sure that's outside of the compound the foot bottom and ground are all attributes that will need to be outside of my compound everything else looks pretty good Let's just edit our compound that we created. So there's nothing in here again that wouldn't work on any other particle system we create. I'm also going to gather together all of my compounds under a single execute node so I don't have to connect multiple outputs for my compound into the ice tree. I can also clean up the test particle position and delete if true by disconnecting the execute. Again, there's only one output executed into the port 1 input, or uh, as we see here. So I'll actually delete my execute and connect in like so. And I'll right click on my ice tree and insert an execute node to gather together all of these ports into a single execute. And then I'll select the execute and all of the nodes minus the ground, feet, and wind. Right click and I'll create a single compound out of all of those nodes and compounds. 
course, I'm going to need to edit that. I'll drop all of these into my ice category of nodes. And I'll rename this Dust Effect. Now it's just a matter of exposing a few attributes. So we'll definitely want to be looking at size. So we'll expose the min and max size. We've got the age limit as well. So we'll expose those two. So there's the minimum age and max age. On the emitter compound, we're going to want to expose the rate, the threshold, so how far away from the interaction between foot and ground do particles emit. We can choose whether or not particles are emitted inside of the splash geometry. And other attributes such as shape, and the spread speed multiplier. So these direction and speed attributes are very important as they control how far the particles uh, move away from their emission source and the surface friction will keep the particles uh, closer to the ground. As far as the turbulence goes, the gradient is important to expose as well as the turbulence, turbulence scale, animation speed, animated flag, and the complexity. When it comes to the forces, gravity, and drag strength, let's rename this one here. And the particle position that we're testing, their value in Y, so again if particles are below a certain point, we want to delete them. So let's call this delete particles. below this value. And again I could make a extra bit of information in Y. And that should about do it. I'll take the entire compound now, close that down, and export my effect. Right click, export compound, and again I've started to build up a, a nice little library of compounds here, so I'll export my dust effect. It'll take a little while to export. But when we have a look under my tools, ice, we now have our dust effect. So our dust effect and our dust shader will work together to help us create that, uh, that look we're after. So we'll take this whole effect now and look at applying it to another character that has a slightly different animation. If you have a look at the way the character works when we animate it, the feet, if I actually just select the point cloud and hide it temporarily here, our character's toes don't actually bend and so the toe drag looks a little bit funny and will create a strange bit of deformation when we apply the footprints compound. So I'm going to actually use a, a different piece of animation that will be a little more accurate for the footsteps effect or the footprints effect. But again this is one of the nice features of ice is we build an effect and we can port it to any other scene with no problems. So we have the first part of this challenge solved. The dust effect created. We'll now move on to create the footprints.